Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel for 2022. It has been a little while since I last posted a video on here. It's been semi-intentional, but semi kind of not intentional as well. I actually did intend to have a few weeks break over Christmas and New Year's and then kind of getting into the beginning of January. Uh, work was really, really busy. It's probably been the busiest start to a year for me work-wise for many years. Uh, January has always been a little bit more of a quieter month. I don't know about you guys, but uh, for photography, January is pretty low-key. And this year it was just really, really busy. So unfortunately, I haven't really been able to create a lot of content lately. Uh, I'm hoping to get back into it very soon. And starting with today's video, of course, we're going to be talking about some different ways that you can soften skin texture in Photoshop. Now, I think that this is something that has been asked on my channel a lot in the past. And I know a lot of people are interested to know how to correct patchiness and a little bit of flakiness on skin tones, even to correct uh, some peach fuzz. This can really work, these techniques that I'm about to show you guys today. And I really thought that this would be a really good all-encompassing video on those sorts of methods. So I want to get straight into the tutorial today. I hope you guys enjoy the content and let's get started. Okay guys, so as I said previously, these techniques that I'm about to show you today can really work well for things like uh, a lot of grouped blemishes in together, some rough texture on the skin or patchiness. Uh, maybe flakiness on the skin tone, or even some peach fuzz. These techniques can work really well for. So I'm gonna show you on a couple of different parts of the skin tone first, but the first technique we're actually going to go through is by using the clone stamp tool. Now, both of these tools that I'm about to show you as well, I don't tend to use them every single time I edit an image. I do find that they're a little bit of a quicker way to remove some of that really rough skin texture. And I tend to be a little bit more meticulous when it comes to retouching for clients or retouching for really strong portfolio work or anything where I need a lot of detail in an image, I usually tend to go very light handed with these techniques. So the first one, as I said, is going to be using the clone stamp tool. So I'm just gonna bring up another blank layer here down the bottom and I'm gonna rename this layer clone. And I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool on the side here. We are going to make sure the brush is nice and big. So I think probably, yeah, maybe around 500 pixels or so for 80 is what we've got here. And I'm going to bring the hardness down to 0%. So we want a really soft brush. Then I'm going to go over to the opacity and flow up the top here. And we're gonna bring this right down to somewhere between 20 and 30%. You wanna be really light handed with this technique. Um, usually I sort of stick to around 30% or so on both of these. So we're just gonna do that today. And then the last adjustment I'm going to make is just by going over to brush settings over here. Sometimes you may need to bring this up in your window uh, tab up the top here and make sure it's selected so it pops up but we are going to make sure that transfer is selected and with pen pressure. So if you're using a graphics tablet, this is going to apply an even lighter effect to the skin tone. Like I said, light handed is best with this. And then for those of you who haven't used the clone tool much in Photoshop before, the best thing is to hold down Alt on your keyboard or I believe Command on a Mac and then select an area nearby to where you're working on. So this is the area that I'm going to be working on and we're gonna select a sample just in that area there. So then I'm going to start running the brush over that area. So you can keep selecting to make sure that you're getting a little bit of different texture and it's not all the same. Obviously I love to do a combination of dodge and burn with this and making sure I'm using my healing tools as well as using this technique to soften the, the skin texture. I try and get as much uh, done with dodge and burn as possible. So you can do this first off before you start your image. And the good thing about working on a new blank layer is that you can kind of turn it on and off to see how far you've gone. You can bring the opacity down a little bit if you feel that you've applied too much of this technique. I'm actually gonna move on to this area here now and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start sampling. And we're going to just keep sampling the area and run the brush over those areas. 
Okay, so I'm gonna turn on that layer and off that layer. So one thing you do need to be careful with this technique, and I didn't mention before, is make sure that you're not taking too much of the highlight away from the skin tone. You don't want it to come up looking too plastic or too waxy, and that's sometimes what can happen by using this technique. So if you do feel that you have gone too far, you can use the history brush tool on a low flow and bring back just some of that texture. But by using this technique overall, it does make it easier if you then want to go and use your healing tools to remove some of the bumps and blemishes afterwards or beforehand if you prefer to do it in that way. So as I said, if we create another layer here just to show you guys an example and I'll name this one healing. We're gonna go over to the spot healing brush tool and zoom in a little bit here. And you can see it's a little bit softer on the skin tone overall here now. So it's just a little bit easier when you're using the healing tools then to run over some of these areas. And the system just kind of works a little bit better because it blends a little bit better because the skin texture isn't as rough. Sometimes you can get a really hard or too much of a sort of scaly sample from the healing brush tool. So zooming out again, and you can see that that's just been a really easy way of kind of removing some of those extra bumpy areas. But once again, I'm just gonna turn this on and off. You can see that that's really made a difference in how soft the texture is looking on the skin. As I said, I like to do the bulk of this and removing a lot of the roughness by using Dodge and Burn as much as I can. But like I've said, there's always gonna be those areas on the skin tone which Dodge and Burn won't really be able to remove. So this is a really good alternative system to using that. And it's really going to help you uh, get that softer texture that you might want on a model skin tone. So if we just zoom in again, I'm just gonna continue just removing a few little bumps there. I might even create a couple of dodge and burn layers. So we'll create a dodge layer here first. Control I to invert that curves layer. Now, if you guys don't know how to dodge and burn, I've got plenty of tutorials on my channel. So I definitely recommend going and checking those out. And we're gonna create a burn layer now. So moving that Curve down, control I to invert. And then making sure we grab our brush tool, paintbrush, get a small size, probably around 40 pixels for this image. Opacity down 100% and flow at 1% and making sure that white is selected. Oh, I'm not sure how we did that. Let's just rename that to Dodge, that's weird. And making sure our layer mask is selected over here, we're then gonna get our paintbrush and just start to paint over some of those areas, just in where it's a little bit textured and not as smooth as we'd like it to be. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of dodging here so you guys can actually see how this technique works from start to finish using your other skin retouching methods as well. So you can put a little bit more dodge like in areas like just on the tip here where it was quite highlighted and we brought a little bit of that highlight away by using the method of the clone stamp tool over the top. We'll just make it a little bit brighter. Okay, so zooming out, I'm just gonna turn the dodge tool on and off again. So you can see that that's really filled in just some of those gaps there. And this is basically how all of these techniques work in conjunction with each other. So I am also going to show you guys by going back to the clone layer, we are going to grab our clone stamp tool again, same settings. And I'll show you guys how this works over a bit of peach fuzz as well. So the same sort of technique, but as before, we're just gonna sample that area, run the brush over the area. You can see there's just a little bit of rough texture here. But remember to keep sampling so you don't get too much of the same sampling. So I'm just gonna bring a little bit of that back just there. And keep sampling. Okay, and if we zoom right in, you can see that there's still a little bit of texture here, 
But what we can do, as I said before, is by using the healing tools to then go over the top now and it will make it a little bit easier to remove some of that texture that's still there. It's just that little bit softer. The blending will look a little bit more smooth when you're removing these areas, but you've still got your texture intact to an extent. Okay, so zooming out again, I wanna show you guys exactly what that looks like without the clone stamp tool. So you can see without the cloning, it's quite rough, quite textured. With both of those on there, we've still got a little bit of texture to work with, but you can kind of adjust that as you go and as you want. So that's kind of how the clone stamp tool technique works in softening texture overall. Now I'm going to be moving on to the next technique. So we're back to our original image now and we're going to be working on the second technique, which is by using the paintbrush tool. Now this is a technique I don't use very often unless I'm really needing to get through some images quickly. And that tends to happen from time to time, especially if you're working on e-commerce imagery and you're retouching that. You do need to be a little bit quicker with your techniques usually. So one thing I like to do here is by creating a new blank layer again, we'll name this one paintbrush. Then we'll go over to the paintbrush tool over here. So same sort of settings as we had before, really at 0% hardness, so it's quite soft. A really large brush. So probably around maybe 800 pixels, we'll just type that in. And then I'm going to make sure that the flow is set to 1% and opacity to 100. You can lower your opacity if you want a softer effect again. And then I'm just going to sample by holding down Alt on the keyboard, getting the eyedropper tool and sampling the colors of the skin tone around the areas that I'm working on. And then I'm just gonna keep sampling. And keep painting over some of those areas. So as I said, I don't use this technique as often anymore. I do find that it's better to use the clone stamp tool overall if you want that detail, because it is preserving the detail a little bit more. This is sort of taking away from it because you're essentially painting onto the skin tone. So you have to be really careful with how this actually works. So as I said, in the last technique, you can use the history brush tool, which is just located over here, and a flow at 1% to kind of bring back some of the texture you might feel that you have lost a little bit too much of, and then sort of fill in certain areas with dodge and burn from there. So this technique really needs to be used very light handedly. I would probably not go much further than this, and I would use it as more of a finishing touch rather than at the beginning of editing an image. Having said that, it's still very effective. And once you kind of learn how to control that technique a little bit more, it can be very helpful for retouching images quickly. Uh, as I said, e-commerce work is usually high volume work and you can't always spend time sitting there dodging and burning from nine to five every day. So this is definitely a viable technique that does work. However, for beauty imagery in particular, I would recommend the first technique more so. Uh, it just preserves that little bit more technique texture in the image and you can be a little bit more particular with where you place the texture as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you click the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you see all the videos that I have coming up in future. Please also let me know in the comments section below what you'd like to see on my channel. I'm hoping to do some more tutorials and more photography related videos on this channel very soon. So thank you guys for watching again and I will see you in the next video. Bye.